So over the past month or two, certain weapons have received buffs. New weapons have been introduced, and while other weapons considered powerful have been knocked back a few pegs. Today I bring you what in my opinion are the 5 most powerful weapons in this game right now. March 2020. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and today I bring another BR3 video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like it really helps me out and subscribe if you want to see more. So Borderlands 3 is full of great weapons, but today I bring you my 5 standout most powerful as of right now. So let's get into it, people. In at number 5 we have nothing other than the Craig Toa. Now this sniper which was buffed in the latest hotfix, I think it was February, March hotfix, whatever, has since made a comeback. It's made a U-turn from the weapon many of us didn't even have a double glance at when we saw it drop. It's now a weapon I am seeing many people regret leaving on the floor. In the latest hotfix, this weapon received a major damage buff, taking it from a damage stat of a 1 to a 4.25. So the increase there is pretty drastic. And it allows the weapon to do things like this to Grave Ward without even having any specific build in place. I mean, specific builds dedicated to making more damage would make this weapon even crazier. Now this sniper is out of a very few in the game right now which are capable of doing this. But I feel in the near future we will see others brought up to this standard now. Many people thought the next weapon on this list would be nerfed as it was crazy powerful when introduced. But seeing snipers such as this, the Firestorm and the Storm all receive major damage buffs it gives me hope going forward that our favourite weapons in the future won't be nerfed into the ground. Instead, similar weapons will be brought up to said weapon's power levels, which is absolutely great. This Krakatoa is a world drop, but its dedicated boss drop is the Rampager upon Promethea within the Forgotten Basilica. I farmed this dude for a few hours trying to get this, but due to those immune stages, it gets a little tedious, it really does. But I did get a few drop, but in saying that guys, in my opinion, you are better off trying to land this within world drop farming spots like the level 2 Freddy, which I've already made a video on. I truly believe you'll see way more often doing it that way. Okay, so moving on, and in at number 4 we have the Wedding Invitation. Another sniper, who would have thought it? Well, snipers are just stepping up people, they really are, and this one, no different. It, in my opinion, is definitely one of the most powerful in the game. If it wasn't limited to doing what only snipers do, it would have been in that one or two spot. So the wedding invitation changed the game for snipers in my opinion after the Lyuda lost its power via a nerf. From that point, snipers kind of fell off the radar in my opinion, and there were just much better weapons out there, all capable of doing, in reality, what snipers in this game offered. But with the recent Broken Hearts Day event came a one-off sniper rifle which truly changed the game and truly changed the way snipers were portrayed in this game. Before this, if you were to mention taking a sniper into a battle, you'd be like, no thanks. There really isn't this game offers sniper-wise, which I can't get out of other weapons within my loadout. And that was, in reality, the truth. Now, since the wedding invitation dropped, that opinion on snipers has, in reality, kind of stopped. The wedding invitation was the first of a line of snipers being amazing and past snipers being buffed. When this first landed, most people thought it was going to receive a nerf, but instead Gearbox have decided to bring snipers up to par with this. Now the difference between this and the Krakatoa is the point in which the wedding invitation gives you back that ammo when you hit a crit spot, which makes it just slightly better in my opinion. And it allows you to literally kill Grave Ward this quick without reloading. So yeah guys, the wedding invitation for those who got it when the event was here, all know what this thing is capable of. A true must have weapon and arguably the best sniper in the game right now. Okay, so in at number 3 we have nothing other than the Cutsman SMG. So the Cutsman is a weapon I'm 100% certain we've all had at least one time in the past. It also is a weapon which has been on the receiving end of a gearbox nerf in the past. Despite all of this though, in my opinion, this weapon still remains one of the best in the game in terms of damage output. So this Maliwan SMG is one of the first things I covered way back when this game first dropped. And at the time, obviously being one of my first legendaries, I knew it was something special, but I just didn't know it would go on to be one of the best weapons in the game, even though I did hype it up. 
I wish I recorded that moment my pal challenged me to a duel not knowing what this was. He was thinking he was a badass on his flak because he was 10 levels above me. Little did he know I had a cutsman. Instant regret as I mounted him and his pet. Now the cutsman not only destroys groups of ads because of its unique way of firing, but he's also a true boss mounter. It's one of the very few weapons in this game which is more or less as amazing as everything you need. And many instances I've come across within this game where the cutsman is the last resort and always comes to my aid. It is a must in my opinion and should be at least within everybody's backpack, if not in your weapon loadout. Now this weapon I have seen of recent many people having issues actually obtaining. It is a world drop but its dedicated boss is Borman Nate from the Meridian Outskirts, which in my opinion is a super long farm. I do feel more efficient legendary farms drop this way more often than you see Borman Nates drop it. So places like the Slaughter Shaft are absolutely great. But like I said earlier, that level 230 farm, which I will link within the video description, I have seen many of the ones I have drop here. But yeah guys, if you don't have this, definitely seek this thing out. You will not be disappointed. Okay, so moving on, and the second best and most powerful weapon in the game right now, in my opinion, is the Redistributor. Now this weapon, exclusive to the Maliwan Raid, is just utterly incredible. Personally, I feel I can say now, due to the fact it seems Gearbox are about that buff life and ain't really going about nerfing things, I thought for a long while that a nerf was indeed coming for this weapon. Using this weapon, you soon realise its single target damage isn't that great. Yeah, the 7th Amp Sharp deals decent damage, but shooting at a single target for sure, this isn't anywhere near the most powerful. But when it comes to those ads stacking up or with ads within certain distances to one another, this thing lays down damage like nothing I have ever seen in this game. I mean, I don't think there is anything in this game capable of killing ads like this does when they are grouped up. It's truly on another level. It's like the damage seems to like multiply by like 20, 30, 40, 50, I don't even know. It's just crazy. And because of the way this thing thrives, it makes for an incredible weapon in places like the Slaughter Shaft, the Maliwan Raid, and other places where you get flooded with ads. This just makes easy work of everything. Even if ads are close enough to bosses and damage change through bosses, you see a crazy damage buff when damage is being dealt to that boss. So yeah guys, I truly feel the redistributor, which if you didn't know was originally a rare weapon, one I have on my wall in Sanctuary, was indeed brought back and made a legendary because it was just that good. It is that good. This needs to be a weapon in my opinion in everybody's loadout for sure. Okay, so moving on people. And guys, the most powerful weapon in this game right now in my opinion is the Lub. The Lub shotgun started life a little weak. For sure, people enjoyed it within the early days, but this shotgun quickly faded away and was forgotten about due to the fact of there being so many other better shotguns in the game. Nobody cared about the Lub. Well people, that was until a recent hotfix which applied a damage buff to this weapon like nothing we have seen in the past. Said hotfix also added orbs spawning upon shooting, going from 1 to 3. Adding to that tick damage orbs generate also, and also adding ammo capacity and usage, the result was a weapon 10 times, at least 10 times stronger than that before the hotfix. And the result is a weapon which utterly mounts everything in its path. If you think the redistributor kill quick upon it chaining two nearby enemies, this basically kills as quick but does so to single targets. And it really doesn't matter what size they are, in fact the bigger they are, the more tick damage these orbs do. Now the lob is a world drop but its dedicated boss is Grave Ward, which to be honest I do feel is quite popular here. I've seen lows drop from him while testing weapons, so it shouldn't be hard for you to get. But in saying that, getting that anointed version to match your build might be a little more difficult and time consuming. But in my opinion people, if you don't have this and want a weapon which really makes this game a walk in the park, no matter the mayhem level you play it on, go and farm Grave Ward. You will not be disappointed when you get this thing and use it guys. It is on another level. It's a 100% must for all Vault Hunters in the game in my opinion. Now guys, if there's a weapon I have featured today which you don't have and like the look of, it doesn't matter what platform you play it on, join my Discord linked within the video description, full of hundreds and hundreds of people trading every single day the best weapons, the rarest weapons, and even some crazy unusual weapons. So if you ain't a member already, be sure to join my Discord linked within the video description. I'm pretty certain someone there will help you find that loot you need.
But on that note, guys, we have come to the end of the video. These are, in my opinion, the top five most overpowered weapons in the game right now. Hopefully they stay overpowered and hopefully Gearbox make even more overpowered because that's what we like. But on that note, we have come to the end of the video, people. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next. One.